Hello and welcome to the Voice of Todd. I'm Tom and we're back with another game review. I know it's been a while, but today I want to talk about Sobo Studios' new game, A Plague Tale Requiem. The sequel to A Plague Tale Innocence, a game I really thought I'd reviewed but clearly haven't. And there's quite a lot to talk about. But first I want to do an overall, no spoilers, general idea of how I feel about the game. Then I'm going to throw up a spoiler warning because there's stuff that I want to talk about. There is going to be footage in this. Uh, it's going to be non-spoilery for the non-spoilery part, only from chapter one, um, or things that you've seen in the trailers. And then when we talk about spoilers, if you don't want the game ruining, I would say jump out then. But I'll remind you as we get closer. So a little bit of setup for this one, because I haven't reviewed the first game. I adore Innocence. I think Amicia and Hugo, the main characters, are excellently brought to life by their respective actors and the animators. I love their interactions and the genuine love between the brother-sister duo, and I think the game's story was phenomenal. It was visually stunning, and the gameplay did everything I needed it to do. It got me playing stealth, and I don't like stealth. I think the first is one of those games that you just have to go and play and experience. It's an interactive story more than, than a traditional game, in my own head. Um, so yeah, I adore Innocence. It's probably one of my top five games of all time. So hopefully you'll understand that I was more than hyped for its sequel. And I had very high hopes. So I'd purposely not watched any of the latest trailers. Uh, I wanted to go in with very limited expectations, um, to be honest, and I didn't want to know anything about the story. So for that non-spoilery summary, um, I really loved Requiem. I think it's visually stunning. There's a nice range of environments to show the beauty of southern France, and the two standouts for me graphically are the improvements with the lighting and the alchemy effects. I think... This is probably the first game that I'd say you've got to play it on a, a PS5, a Series X, or a, a beefy PC to really see how good this is. The fire animations as well are fantastic. And I think this is the first game that I've played where the characters don't look covered in olive oil when it rains. This game is very pleasing to the eye. So first off, excellent start. The other thing that really stood out to me before we touch on um, the main sort of things that you'll play is the music. Um, it really fits the story beats perfectly and it helps with the emotional pulls that inevitably happen in these games. Character animations are just as good as the last and the voice acting and script are superb. I'd probably say better than Innocence. Again, the foundation of the game is Hugo and Amici's relationship, and it's just as wonderful as the first game. The story is a very worthy follow-on from the last game too. Upgrade path for weapons and tools function basically the same way, and it felt like it worked perfectly for what you need to do. Again, loot is basically the same. They don't need to fix a broken system. Um, you will need to hunt out chests at times so you can keep upgrading more things, but it, it it's fine. I did really like the skill tree in this. There are three options, um, so each one has four skills to unlock, and instead of leveling up, they just unlock depending on how you play. So, stealth makes you stealthier. Aggression makes killing enemies easier, and opportunism leads more toward loot and crafting. It's simple, and it felt like it flowed very well as I progressed through the game. As with the first game, you grow a motley crew of companions, starting with Beatrice, their mother, and Lucas, the apprentice from the first game, and a good handful of others along the way. I'll talk more about them in the spoilery bit, but as with the last game, it's a wonderful cast of helpers you can't help but like, despite their obvious flaws. These guys really know how to write complex and interesting characters, and this game showcases that. My only real complaint is some of the gameplay elements. I tried to play this one much more stealthily than the last. And there are times when you need to react quickly to certain threats, or if you're like me, you're rubbish at stealth, and you get into a fight because someone sees you. 
I often found that I didn't have the right ammo or equipment and I I just let them kill me to restart the section because I didn't see any other way without thinking about what to do next. The biggest problem for me was with the weapon and ammo selector system. It just it's not easy to navigate either when you're in a panic or you're trying to do something quickly. While I think it's better than the last game overall, it still causes frustration. I'm not sure how they could improve it. And playing on a controller, I know that there are limitations with how many buttons there are, but it still caused problems for me. The only other minor issue that I had was navigating through the levels. As with the last game, this is still fairly linear in terms of level progression, but there were times where I couldn't quite work out what it wanted me to do in certain puzzles or where it wanted me to go at first glance. Not a big issue, and there are companions who will prompt you after a little bit, but I did get lost or turned around a couple of times in some of these levels. Overall, I had a great time with this, and I'd recommend it to everyone. Definitely play the first before this, as they're heavily linked, but Requiem is a very well thought out continuation of the story, and I was constantly blown away by the level of care and detail put into this game. Now, for the spoilery part. Here I'm going to focus on a couple of the story elements, so if you don't want to have that spoiled, check out now, and thanks for watching. Okay. So story-wise, I really loved it. It picks up sooner than I was expecting, only about six months after the last game, and it starts off with the usual cute, fun chapter one that quickly descends into madness and death. I felt there were many more twists in this game that I wasn't expecting, and while the first was quite dark and bloody, Requiem quickly returns to the same vibe, with Amicia descending into a vengeful madness. I tried to play it stealthy, but there are parts where you just have to kill, and she does not hold back. The game's story really does force Amicia down a brutal path. With lines of dialogue from every companion about how brutal and efficient she is at killing, granted there are times you have to, but there is much more of a constant reminder that killing everything isn't the best way. But after all, she's doing this all for Hugo. To really play on that, the first few chapters of the game have Hugo locked away, basically being tortured by a magister of an order that we've only just found out about. Which makes it worse. Q, a billion rats, and a ruined city, and it's Amicia and Hugo on the way to find an island from his dreams, hopefully to find a cure. And that's really where this game picked up for me, when Amicia and Hugo left Beatrice and Lucas the story comes back and centres on their relationship. While I didn't see the shift in focus coming, it actually makes sense, and with Hugo to look after, it really pulls Amicia back from the edge of the violent abyss, and Hugo's determination to find the island drives them both on. And predictably, as the story progresses, Hugo starts to lose hope as he gets worse. And it's Amicia who becomes the hopeful focused one, pushing Hugo onwards so they can learn the truth about the macula and the first carrier and protector. This whole segment really expands on the lore of the macula and gives a lot of depth to the past, while linking it with real world historical elements, it's very early Assassin's Creed, but in a good way. The whole island section of the story is very nice, Predictable, but it's lovely. It's basically a pagan cult who are worshipping the first carrier of the macula that they believe he will return and show them the way to happiness and a better life. It's led by the Count of Provence and his crazy wife Emily. Basically, it all goes to hell in a very predictable way and nearly everyone dies. But I did like how this was handled and the brutality in which it all comes about. It also gives us the big bad count as the endgame villain. Now I said earlier that I loved the complexity around the companions, and chief of these are Sophia, a pirate captain, and Arno, yes, the one who is hunting you from the earlier chapters. 
Sophia is just a wonderful character who gets caught up in the Darum kids' web of violence and horror. And she really functions as the audience voice, I think. Ultimately, she's there to help and show Amicia that there is more to life than the rigid masculine structure of the Middle Ages. She's also really cool. And her interactions with Hugo are so kind and genuine, it really brings some positivity to a very bleak game. And on to Arno, who starts out as a villain. Becomes an untrusted companion, but as you spend time with him, well, as I spent time with him, I really got to like him. He's a bastard, caught up in a quest for vengeance and a product of life of war as a soldier. He's mean, he's hard, and he's broken. He's at the end of the path that Amicia is currently speeding down at the start of the game. But he really does care for Hugo. And again their interactions are genuinely warm and positive. And I think his journey from villain to hero really works, building up to a powerful moment at the end. Even if it's pretty obvious, it works. I'll quickly touch on, on Lucas and Beatrice as well, because they still have a role in this. Um, Lucas a much bigger role, and he's very useful. Again, he, at the start of the game, he represents the audience's eyes through this game. He's very focused on his alchemy training. He's unwavering in trying to keep Amicia and Hugo alive, despite everything. Because as he says in the later stages of the game, they're the only family he has. Beatrice has a much smaller part as with the first. She basically thinks that the Order is the only way to help Hugo, and that he is destined to be killed by the Macula, probably soon, and she's already made peace with it. I like that she gets left behind, but I didn't expect her to show up again until the end of the game. But both her and Lucas show up on the island just as everything's gone to hell. It's a wonderful reunion that leads to a brutal and heartbreaking moment as she is killed by the cult leader Emily in front of Amicia and Hugo. It's brutal, it's heartbreaking, I honestly did not imagine the game would go there, but I think that it's the first moment that really throws the audience off. If they'll kill their mother, who will they kill next? It's about this point in the first game where you learnt that she was alive and then it's rescuing her. This game flips that on its head and she returns to you to then be killed. And as harsh as it is, I think her death actually acts as the final push into the last few chapters. The last few chapters are much quicker and much more restricted in exp exploration and I guess it basically leads you down that path knowing that there is no way out now. Last thing I want to talk about is the ending. Uh, basically Hugo is kidnapped again by the Count and thinks Amicia is dead so he lets the Macula take over. Chapter 16 which is really the final chapter is called King Hugo and it's visually stunning but brutal. It basically plays out as a, a playable cinematic with Hugo guiding Amicia to him. It's a beautiful little twist on what you've been doing the entire game. I think it's a fantastic way to close out this game because it shows you the true horror of the macula at work and shows you the toll that the events of this game have taken on Hugo and we're left with only one option. Again, I think that this is the only choice that the story would allow, but it's bleak. You have to kill Hugo. My biggest problem here, as you'll see if you watch my playthrough, is that you have to kill him with the sling and not the crossbow. It felt really heartless. And honestly, it's heartbreaking, because all you want to do and all Amicia is trying to do is save him. And 24 hours on from when I finished the game, I think I'm still processing it. It's, it's a moment that 
while I sort of guessed was a possibility, I hoped wouldn't be true. But then we get a time jump for the epilogue, it's about a year later, and it's a wonderful close for these characters that we've grown to love. Amici is living in the mountains alone in her mother's cabin where she wanted to take Hugo to keep him safe. Sophia arrives to try and take her on her next adventure, to try and find the next carrier and protector and help them in their trials, setting up a potential future for the series, but we also get a really touching goodbye at Hugo's grave. It felt like the perfect goodbye to these characters that I've loved for so long since playing the first game. And while being really sad, it also leaves you with that little bit of hope. Honestly, I think it's the perfect place to leave these characters too. It's a definite ending, and while Amicia, Lucas and Sophia are all still out there, I don't think that you can make another Plague Tale story with them and not have Hugo in it. But there is a post credit scene, and I think I'll leave you with my initial reaction. So thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. I... I'd be interested in maybe something two, three, four hundred years. Uh, or even a big departure, but potentially a modern day Plague Tale. Plague Tale reawakening or something. And you're going through and you're finding the, the breadcrumbs that Amicia has left following this game. Um, just as a, a, a gut feeling of, of what they could do next because it's a big IP now um, I don't think, I think that there will probably be another game unless the studio are, are dead set that there won't be there's more I was about to press stop recording then as well what's oh, modern that's a breathing machine. Well, that's a tease. I didn't know that tease was there when I was talking about do a modern day one. Um, following in Amicia, but it just seemed like they were setting up. Amicia's gonna, she's gonna find the next carrier, the next protector. It doesn't need a third, but now I kind of want one. <laughs> wow.